Washington Cryer's journal, Hugo speaking. Hey boss, it's me. Gail, I thought you left for the holidays. I can't stop thinking about it, boss. The letter? I can't get it out of my head. Something about this one just feels different. Different? What are you talking about? Is this about the hotel story again? I just think it could be worth checking out is all. I keep thinking- Didn't I tell you to not waste time with this kind of crap? These people are lonely, Gail. They have nothing better to do. They just want some form of recognition. Even this Ben guy? He doesn't exist. Believe me, this is all hogwash. I've seen it before. I'm just saying, this one feels different. It just doesn't make sense. Lying about something like this, and the letter itself, something about it really stuck with me. What are you really asking me here? I think I'm asking you to trust me. Listen, I'll even bring my own camera. Do you have a title? I'll figure it out. <clears throat> Benjamin's Sin. The Inquirer's Journal, dated January 9th, 1979, by Gail Smith. My arrival seems to be expected. A single room key with a note attached. Someone here has been waiting for me. The hotel's glory days might be long past, but the walls are strangely comforting. I might have hoped Benjamin would meet me here, but no such luck. Well, the importance of the game to Toronto, they and Buffalo tied for second place in the Adams Division with 57 points apiece. Coming into this hockey game in the third period underway, and immediately the lead cleared into the Detroit end the offside. And we were talking about Mr. Monaghan. They've given Monaghan a pomatier, I should say, an assist on Monaghan's goal. Old Thompson received two stitches. Turns out the door to the mystery was right here with me all along. Benjamin wanted me to see something. This guy worked a normal job, had a normal life, 
where to get drugs and when that life grew like grey and boring, this is where he would come speed or something than it is to, to be completely to alone. Store, you have to wait in line. Turns out he wasn't. The kitchen staff going about their day, fulfilling their mundane tasks. Little did they know that someone was keeping an eye on them, waiting for a misstep. I remember hearing breathing, she said, but I wasn't in a state of mind to think anything of it. And she thought her husband was the only one who knew of her violent outbursts. Strange place to make a lair, dusty and cramped. I wonder if he watched me from his bed when I arrived. He hid in the shadows of his room to drink and sleep his days away. The stench of liquor carries through the vent and becomes an opening for the world to know his terrible secret.
parallel with the ice, and the puck just took one of those unbelievable rolls and rolled in under his arm, right into the net. Those things happen, but he did make several key saves. Like putting on a mask, Benjamin slipped into the very walls of the hotel. It's like no one ever saw him again, but he was always there. Socially, they call it, but I think a lot of adults drink just because drinks are going around. Really not much different than uh, teenagers. I don't think so. Today's program will look at the pervasive drug influences in today's America with comments by experts on aspects of the drug problem. Later program. In early age, we will observe a series of dialogues between teachers, children, and consultants. Two communities' responses to the issues will be presented. Finally, we will see children and adults working together to better understand each other and consider alternatives to drug experimentation. Let us begin now with a key statement by Dr. Joel Fort, former drug consultant to the World Health Organization, former director of the Council on Alcoholism for Alameda County, and presently lecturer in the School of Social Welfare at the University of California, Berkeley. First of all, we live in a drug-ridden or drug-saturated society where people are taught from infancy to use a wide variety of mind-altering drugs. Benjamin made a whole world inside these walls, and he made sure nobody knew, even though they were all part of it. They had no idea the purpose he found in lying in wait, looking in on all those sad little lives. And what did I feel? I saw the openings, and gladly I looked. This is a story about remorse. This is a story about obsession. Benjamin couldn't live with the weight of his sin. He had seen too much and had nobody to tell it to. I saw what he saw, and it still wasn't enough to shift the blame. But the worst part of it all, I think I understand. Hey, boss, I have the title. <laughs> 